A very good morning, very good uh, afternoon, evening to everybody. Um, my name is uh, Matti Hakamaki, and uh, I'm director of uh, Finnish Folk Music Institute. I'm very glad uh, that I've uh, given this chance to participate in this very meaningful, important conference. Thank you very much, ISHCAP. Thank you very much, uh, uh, ICH NGO Forum, for organizing this, uh, this uh, conference. Uh, the topic is, of course, uh, very, very important, the overall topic of the, of the conference. Uh, but my presentation will be uh, about a little bit different uh, thing, uh, as was uh, mentioned just a few seconds ago. Uh, it's about geographical imbalance, the challenge of getting a more balanced representation of accredited NGOs under the 2003 convention. So uh, I come from Finland. Uh, I'm director of Finnish Folk Music Institute. We are situated in Kaustinen, in a small village in the middle of Finland. Uh, we aim to promote uh, Finnish folk music, folk dance culture. We do documenting work, archiving, researching work, and um, we publish recordings, books, sheet music. We also uh, work with education, with Napari uh, Pedagogy, which is a folk music way of, of educating uh, music to, to mainly to, to children and youngsters. Uh, but we also participate in vocational and academic uh, uh, training and uh, education. We work at uh, local, national, and, and international levels, and uh, we, we execute capacity building measures among different ICH communities. So, first of all, uh, uh, about uh, NGOs. Non-governmental organizations are organizations which are independent of uh, governmental involvement. The United Nations use the term for organizations which are neither governments nor member states and gives them observer status at its assemblies and meetings. UNESCO has built up over the years a valuable network of cooperation in its field of competence with NGOs representing civil society. NGOs are recognized as important stakeholders for the implementation of the 2003 Convention for the Safeguarding of the Intangible Cultural Heritage. NGOs are um, in the ongoing reflection process. Uh, several possible roles for NGOs have been pointed out. How they could act uh, in the in the spirit of, of, of convention and in the action, actions and implementations of the convention. First of all, uh, NGOs could be laboratories of ideas and inspiring practices. They could contribute to safeguarding measures and uh, follow up inscribed elements. Uh, NGOs well equipped are well equipped to share safeguarding experiences in lighter ways. NGOs' role in awareness raising is uh, recognized and uh, in building and strengthening capacities. And uh, NGOs' possible role is also report functions serving the committee and the overall research framework, regional reporting, status of the inscribed elements, and so on. To achieve the purposes of the 2003 convention, it is very important that as many cultures as possible attend with their different traditions and worldviews. The now 180 state parties who have ratified the convention are distributed through the world. UNESCO has organized the world into six electoral groups for their elections. So here we can see the six different electoral groups. Uh, first, uh, number one, Western Europe, North America, two, Eastern Europe, three, Latin America and the Car Caribbean, uh, four, Asia and the Pacific, uh, five, A, Sub-Saharan Africa, and five, B, Arab states. And uh, you can see from uh, Kraft, uh, from this graph that uh, the accredited NGOs, they come mainly from the group one, the Western Europe and North America. 
This is, was the situation 2012. Here is the graph for uh, 2018. And then uh, 2020, we see that the main situation is the same. I'm sorry, I don't have the, the new accredited NGOs here now in the 2020 uh, graph, but uh, we can see with the, old, with the new accreditations, also the situation is mainly the same, even though there has been some, some uh, things going to the better direction. Anyways, it is very important not to see or uh, look at only the, the numbers here, just uh, maybe the overall picture is more important. And uh, we have to also remember that uh, many of the international NGOs, they are keeping their headquarters in the Group A area. So this is why, why this Group A uh, one is also uh, um, bigger, but, uh, but it doesn't kind of, uh, um, the, the problem still remains. And we can see that the, 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 the overall challenge is, uh, is still, still uh, present. And uh, one important thing to look at this uh, graph is also to, to think about future, how, how things will proceed in two years, in five years, now that uh, the convention is getting more popular and well, more known in, in many countries. Uh, how, how will these uh, uh, representations change in the future? The unbalanced geographical distribution of accredited NGOs was identified as one of the major concerns by the General Assembly, the committee and the secretariat when the reflection process on the advisory role of accredited NGOs started at 12 com in 2017. The concern on the unbalanced geographical distribution has been pointed out in numerous working documents of the governing bodies. The committee and the General Assembly repeatedly encouraged uh, NGOs from underrepresented electoral groups that meet the criteria for accreditation to submit their requests for accreditation at the earliest opportunity so as to improve the geographical distribution of accredited NGOs and invited state, state parties from those electoral groups to make this call widely known among NGOs operating within their territories. In decision uh, 14.15, the encouragement also included state parties, the ICH NGO forum, accredited non-governmental organizations, category two centers and UNESCO chairs to organize capacity building activities for newly accredited non-governmental organizations and for non-governmental organizations that may be interested in seeking accreditation in the future. With a particular focus on non-governmental organizations based in underrepresented regions. So this uh, challenge has been uh, uh, recognized for for a long time now and in in many many uh, levels of the convention one of the recent actions to address the challenge is an initiative towards the establishment of a working group for the ICH NGO forum dealing with regional imbalance of accredited ICH NGOs the initiative came from our NGO, the Finnish Folk Music Institute, and was endorsed by the ICH NGO Forum Steering Committee. An invitation for a new working group and a survey on the regional imbalance of accredited NGOs under the 2003 convention was launched in uh, the ICH NGO Forum newsletter of the 31st uh, August 2020. The survey was addressed to all stakeholders of the convention. Seven persons uh, re uh, responded to the request from five accredited NGOs and one UNESCO facilitator from four out of six electoral groups. Um, there could have been more answers in the survey, but uh, we are still uh, with the happy and the, uh, of the quality of the answers. We got uh, very interesting points out. There were two main questions with the survey. 
how to reach out uh, to relevant NGOs in the underrepresented uh, regions. And then uh, the other one was to suggest ICH NGOs and ICH, ICH experts belonging to the underrepresented parts of the world who could be willing to work uh, with the working group. Um, with the first question, how to reach out to relevant NGOs in the underrepresented regions of the world. Uh, the results from the uh, survey were, it was mentioned uh, that is to, it's important to know the local and regional conditions. Uh, with, the, with the working group, we could think of uh, to develop a sub-regional strategy, strategies a regional focal, focal points, uh, accredited NGOs or, or UNESCO facilitators included. Uh, we could uh, have a network of brokers on a regional level. Also, it was mentioned that uh, promoting awareness uh, is uh, highly essential. Uh, making a toolkit was mentioned. Uh, with this idea, it was mentioned that regional videos of experiences from the accreditation, from the NGOs accredited, we could have uh, video interviews, interviews, we could make brochures, uh, use media, web pages, social media in this work. The third uh, um, point addressed was regional activity, uh, uh, webinars, could be um, organized on accreditation process, sharing experience with the convention. Make overview of NGOs working with ICH. Then the other, other uh, question that was uh, asked in the survey uh, to suggest ICH NGOs and ICH experts belonging to the underrepresented parts of the world who could be willing to work in the spirit of convention. We, of course, got uh, names and, and the names of NGOs in the survey, but here are the kind of the overall result, uh, re, uh, results of the, of the survey. Uh, what could be take, taken into uh, consideration? Uh, make a regional call to stakeholders of the convention create a database of people, bearers, academics, and other relevant stakeholders who could uh, disseminate the goals and achievements of the convention. Uh, and especially this could be done uh, either by the intergovernmental committee or then ICH NGO uh, forum, the steering committee, or with the, with the uh, help of this uh, new working group. Mm, make contact with NGOs, how to get their accreditation request, uh, who, oh, sorry, uh, who got their accreditation request turned down. Uh, it would be possible to use the networks of accredited NGOs, uh, contact directly the candidates for the International Jeonju uh, ICH award, contact uh, NGOs directly involved in nominations, requests for the four mechanisms of the convention. So the survey is, uh, uh, it was made in, in September and the deadline was postponed once, but actually the survey still exists. Uh, so uh, we would very much like if you are interested, any of, uh, of the accredited NGOs or, or uh, different stakeholders interested in the, in the, uh, in the topic, uh, the questionnaire is uh, still open and you can find it from the ICH NGO forum uh, webpage. Um, so please, if, uh, if uh, considering this, uh, we would be very grateful for, for your input. About the working group, uh, five persons offer to be members of the working group on improving the world balance of accredited NGOs and attend regular online discussions. Four NGOs are represented and two persons want to join as experts representing three out of six regions. According to the bylaws of ICH NGO Forum, 
it lacks the support of one NGO to be created as a working group in the forum. The working group will start discussions based on the possible measures received via the survey and work with the aim to overcome the ongoing imbalance. In parallel, we will invite other interested persons to come forward, especially those belonging to elector electoral regions 4, 5A and 5B. This is important both to get the regional knowledge represented in the working group and to become a formal working group under the ICH NGO forum. So how to proceed? Uh, we are uh, very positive of uh, finding this one lacking uh, NGO and uh, actually pretty sure that we will also have more NGOs interested in this, uh, on this topic. So, so we will uh, ask the steering committee in the future to, to recognize this uh, working group. And uh, hopefully we will have a session um, in the coming months, coming weeks, to, to start uh, the, the considerations of the, of the actions of this uh, working group. If anybody interested, uh, please contact uh, straight to me or then by asking, uh, uh, by answering to the survey, which will be found from the ICH NGO forums webpage. Thank you very much.